Good morning. Assalamualaikum. My name is Dr. Vicky, resident urology, uh, SIT. Today I'm here to present gonococcal infection. Uh, epidemiology of sexual transmitted disease. The Center of Disease Control and Prevention publishes annual report on the number of sexually uh, cases of sexually transmitted disease in the United States. Data from 2012 estimates that nearly 20 million new, new sexual transmitted disease occurs every year in the United States half among which are 15 to 24 years individuals. The group accounted, accounted for 58% gonorrhea and 68% chlamydia, as these cases coexist. Uh, factors that increase the sexual transmitted disease are higher number of lifestyle, uh, life sex partners, unprotected sex with other, without use of condoms, risky sex partners. Uh, CT screen, screening is recommended for these individuals that are being uh, proposed by United States uh, by CDC. Annual chlamydia uh, screening for all sexually active women age 25 and younger, as well as for women with risk factors such as new or multiple sex partners. Annual gonorrhea screening for at-risk sexually active women, including women with new or multiple sex partners or women who are living in areas with high rate of disease. Cephalus, HIV, and chlamydia screening for all pregnant women and gonorrheal uh, screening for at-risk pregnant women starting early in pregnancy with repeat testing as needed. At least once per year screening for cephalus, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and HIV for all sexually active gay, bisexual, and MSM. Men who have multiple or anonymous partners should be screened more frequently for sexual transfer diseases at three to six months of interval. According to CDC, diseases that must be reported at local health authorities include cephalus, gonorrhea, chlamydia, cancroid, HIV. Well, being urologist, we usually uh, encounter uh, urethritis, and which is the most common uh, urological manifestation of monococcal infection. Uh, urethritis or uh, urethral inflammation can be a result of sexual transmitted disease. Symptoms include urethral discharge, Ruritis and dysuria. Several organisms can cause urethritis. Two broad classes are gonococcal urethritis caused by Neisseria gonorrhea and uh, non gonococcal urethritis caused by all other organisms. Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram negative cocci, teplococci, discovered by A. Neisseri in 1879. It is an obligate human pathogen and is the second most common bacterial cause of sexual transfer disease in the United States. Its incubation period is 3 to 14 days, primarily affects urogenital tract, usually columnar epithelium. Uh, usually this bacteria transmits by uh, direct, indirect and transplant center route. Direct is 99% sexual, indirect is by household objects, uh, transplant center by hematogenous or by through ammonotic uh, fluid. This is the picture depicting Diplococcus. According to an article published in 2016 by Microbial Cell, Nasseri gonorrhea is an etiology, etiological agent that is strictly human origin. Uh, it, it is strict, <coughs> sorry, uh, for strictly human sexually transmitted disease gonorrhea. Infections lead to limited immunity, therefore individuals can become repeatedly infected. And gonorrhea is generally an, unco generally an uncomplicated mucosal infection with pustular discharge. Most severe sequelae includes salpingitis, PID, which may lead to sterility and ectopic pregnancy. Occasionally, the organism can disseminate it and, uh, as a bloodstream infection. Pathogenesis. Natural gonorrhea primarily colonizes the urogenital tract after sexual contact with infected individuals. The gonococcal infection can exist in both extracellular and intracellular organisms, with the bulk of its gene being devoted to colonization and survival. Due to the fact that it cannot survive outside a human body, transmission is generally sequelae for of sexual intercourse upon arrival into the new host. Upon arrival into the new host, microcolonies formation commences on the non-ciliated columnar cells, approximately one to two hour post-infection. Once microcolonies achieve a density, 
सेल डेंसिटी है अप्रोक्सीमेटली हंड्रेड प्लस डिप्लोकोका है साइटो डिप्लोकोका है साइटोकोकल साइटो स्केलेटल रीअरेंजमेंट एंड होस्ट प्रोटीन एग्रीगेशन अकर्स व्हिच लीड्स टू पाइलस मीडियट अटैचमेंट ऑफ द गोनोकोकस टू द सी डी होस्ट सेल डिफेंस रिसेप्टर्स on once bound the pili structures from more tighter contact with the host the hallmark symptom of non complicated gonococcal infection is a massive recurrent uh, recruitment of neutrophils to the site of infection leading to the formation of pustular discharge despite the active recruitment of polymorph to the site of infection gonococcal can survive the oxidative and non oxidative defense mechanism this is a picture depicting that uh, 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 infection uh, affects the gonococcal uh, columnar non ciliated columnar cells and that it gets engulfed by the bacteria and polymorph polymorphs are being localized at the uh, epithelia to cause pustular discharge and inflammation usually men are mostly symptomatic that cause them to get treatment soon and in a and soon and prevent enough transmission this could uh, in men the symptoms could include urethritis epididymitis uh, proctitis and prostatitis while in women complications are mostly uh, mostly asymptomatic but if presents they could present with pelvic inflammatory disease tubal scarring infertility ectopic pregnancy or chronic pelvic pain there are some symptomatic and asymptomatic uh, people usually uh, gonococcal could be uh, two type of two types associated with genitourinary tract or extra genital tract when associated with genitourinary tract it can cause urethritis cervicitis proctitis while if it is associated with extra gonoco extra genital it could include uh, pharyngitis conjunctivitis complications of gonococcal infection local complications of gonococcal infection like epididymitis present up to 20% most common cause of acute epididymitis acute epididymitis in patients under age of 35 are trichomatous and neisseria gonorrhea penile lymphangitis penile edema that is also bull headed clap post inflammatory urethral structures or periurethral abscess can be some of the complications while in women the complications could be pid which is most common of all complications of gonorrhea as well as the most important in terms of public health impact 10 to 20% of those with acute gonococcal infection uh, could also come with bartholin gland abscess however the systemic complication that are extra genital could more uh, could be more common in female disseminated gonococcal infection may usually manifest by acute arthritis dermatitis syndrome is the most common symptom systematic complication of acute gonorrhea classic skin lesions like gonococcal dermatitis a tender necrotic pustule or on a erythematous base may present as a macule papule pustule petechiae bullae or ecchymosis located on the distal portion of extremities Gonococcal endocarditis and meningitis can occur in 1 to 3% of the patients with disseminated infection. This is the picture of depicting of that pustule. In both gender disseminated gonococcal infection with bacteremia may occur. Uh usually occurs via blood stream. Gonococcal strands causing disseminated infection usually are resistant to serum and complement systems. This can lead to joint uh, involvement of joint leading to gonococcal arthritis. tendon sheath inflammation leading to tendinosynovitis in heart it could cause endocarditis in pharynx pharyngitis meningitis and skin infections <coughs> gonococcal is also uh, involving uh, other symptoms like in pregnancy it could lead to postpartum endometritis septic abortions and postpartum pelvic inflammatory disease possibility is that role of uh, their role in gestational bleeding preterm labor and delivering or premature rupture of membrane screening of gonococcal patients in pregnancy screen in first trimester and again third trimester is mandatory for high risk and high prevalence patients high risk patients means new new partners multiple partners 
non mutual monogamous monogamous relationship means multiple partners concurrent sexually transmitted disease higher prevalence among adolescents urban low socio economic status patients and certain geographical areas has been seen however there are some patients that are, remain asymptomatic because of a large number of monococcal infections are asymptomatic routine screening with uh, anath that is nucleic acid amplification test should be offered to sexually active patients at risk of infection and complication of gonorrhea gonorrhea who present to care these include hiv infected male or female sexually active women below 25 individuals with new or many multiple sex partners uh men who have sex with other men sexually active individuals living in areas with high gonorrhea prevalence individuals with a risk of other sexually transmitted disease or women 35 or below old or male below 30 or above uh, 30 uh, old entering correlation facilities usually this presents with a, a history of urethral discharge in male uh, with complaint of pain or burning while passing of urine Uh, increased frequency of urination sexual ex- exposure to high risk factors uh, pre- high risk factors includes oral genital sex as well on examination look for urethral meatus for redness and swelling if urethral discharge is not seen then gently massage the urethra on the ventral part of the penis towards the meatus and thick creamy pus can be seen at it A lab investigations usually need gram stain examination of urethral smear will show gram negative intracellular diplococci in case of gonorrhea while in non gonococcal urethritis it is more than 5 polymorph cells per oil emergent field <clears throat> in urethral smear or greater than 10 polymorph in high field on the first volume voided while in female it could present with menstrual history to rule out pregnancy in when while taking history a nature and type of discharge and amount of smell amount smell and consistency is seen usually complaint is genital itching burning micturition frequency of urination presence of any ulcer swelling on vulva or inguinal region genital complication uh, genital complaint in sexual partners like pain during intercourse or lower back pain on examination vaginitis or cervical cystitis can be uh, excluded or included like in trachomatas trachomonas green frothy discharge can be seen and candidias curdy white discharge can be seen uh, bacterial vaginosis adenoid discharge can be seen and multiple infections mixed infections may present as a typical discharge while in cervical cystitis erosion cerv- uh, cervical erosion cervical ulcers mucopurulent cervical discharge or on biomanual infection can be done to rule out pid the diagnosis is usually uh, to obtain urethral smear urethral specific smear uh, swab by cotton or rayon swab is inserted 2 cm in the urethra and rotated gently before withdrawing if there is profuse urethral discharge it could be uh, taken without inserting the swab a few drops of first voided view voided urine can be used in males but the sensitivity is low as compared to the swap gram staining for men uh, gram uh, gram stain smear of urethral discharge exuded showing intracellular gram negative diplococci is diagnostic but as women carries normal vaginal flora such as velonella or occasionally gram negative cocula bacillus may resemble gonococca in case of women may not be diagnostic so cultures and identification process is needed as well for confirmation cultures like modified air medium or modified new york city medium can be used uh, there are certain biochemical tests that are also by being identified for uh, to know the to identify for identification of neisseria gonorrhea like oxidative test if it is positive that could uh, say about that would explain that it is gonococcal infection or ferment glucose but not maltose sucrose or lactose DNA test negative, beta galactoside test negative, or glutamine amino peptide negative. Other methods like enzyme-linked immunoelisa is also used as a rapid test and is sensitive to gonorrhea. PCR method like nucleic acid amplification is one of the choice. 
the oxidative uh, reaction test uh, that we did are aids to uh, that aids to identify identify gonococcal infection for mixed culture a drop of tetramethyl phenyl diamine hydrochloride is poured over suspected colonies which turn pink and dark blue nucleic acid amplification test uh, pcr transcription method amplification test amplification and other nucleic acid amplification technologies are more sensitive than culture and diagnostic immunological and biological detection of gonococcal antigens or metabolic products including surface surface proteins endotoxins and oxidate oxidase or other enzymes also has been investigated in past but currently seem less promising than nucleic acid detection fluorescent conjugated antibodies that is detection of detection of positive uh, detection gives positive results in 24 hours but before conventional cultures techniques usually according to the campbell diagnosis could be gram stain uh, showing more than 5 blood uh, wbcs per high power field presence or absence of wbc in, in within intracellular gram uh, with intracellular gram negative with diplococca indicating gonococcal urethritis gonococcal infection sorry positive leukocyte ester test results on uh, first voided urine on micros uh, microscopic examination for first voided urine sediment demonstrating more than w 10 wbc of high power field uh, not that is nucleoside uh, amplification test Uh, performed on urine can be used to look for neisseria gonorrhea and chlamydia both cultures and hybridization hybridization test that requires urethral swab specimen are available nucleoside amplification test uh, nucleic nucleic acid amplification te- uh, test are preferred because of their high sensitivity and urethral swabs are no longer recommended for examination of urethritis nowadays all patients should be tested for both gonorrhea and claim idea because of high susceptibility of co infection treatment as per campbell dual therapy is required for neisseria gonorrhea and claim idea because of high rates of co infection gonorrhea treatment is hindered by the ability of gonorrhea to develop antimicrobial resistance as of 2007 quinones are no longer recommended in united states for treatment of gonorrhea associated conditions such as pid as of august 2012 because of high resistance cefexim is no longer recommended as a first line treatment to treat gonorrhea current treatments for uncomplicated gonorrhea infection of cervix urethra and rectum involves ceftriaxone 250 mg intramuscular single dose plus 1 g orally uh, in a single dose or doxycycline 100 mg orally twice per day for 7 days because uh, not uh, not cannot provide susceptibility nucleic uh, susceptibility result in case of treatment failure a culture test should be performed along with antimicrobial susceptibility test all patients with gonorrhea should be tested for other sexual transmitted diseases like chlamydia syphilis and hiv treatment is no different in person with hiv in person with a history of penicillin allergy third generation cephalus friend has have a low incidence of cross reactivity lower than 5% to 10% the first generation cephalus friends usually the treatment of syndrome specific guidelines of partners management are they are saying that treat all recent partners that are in contact with that patient treat partners on the same line advise sexual abstinence during the course of treatment and use or provide condoms refer for voluntary counseling and testing for hiv syphilis and hepatitis b advise to return after 7 days follow up after 7 days see hiv uh, see reports of hiv syphilis and hepatitis b management in the pregnancy is tablet cefexime 400 mg state or injection ceftriaxone 125 intramuscularly plus tablet erythromycin 500 mg qid for 7 days or capsule amoxicillin 500 mg tds for 7 days well <coughs> management in program, pregnant women in first trimester is usually done locally with clotrimoxazole vaginal pastry cream 
Local metronidazole pastry cream can also be advised in the very first trimester. In second trimester, tablet secnitazole 2 gram state or tablet tendinazole 500 milligram BD can be given. Partners, uh, partner treatment guideline treat partner only if the improvement of the after initial symptoms can be seen. Gonococcal infection, uncomplicated urethral cervical, uh, cervical and rectal infections can be treated with cefexime 400 mg as a single dose or ceftrazone 125 mg as a single dose intramuscularly plus azithromycin as a single dose or doxycycline 100 mg twice for 7 days. Uncomplicated which is uh, pharyngitis that is an extra gonococcal infection, extra genital uh, gonococcal infection can be treated with ceftrazone 125 intramuscularly plus azithromycin uh, or 1 gram as a single dose or doxycycline 100 mg twice which is the same other if the patient is including uh, gonococcal infection with chlamydial infection azithromycin 1 gram single dose or doxycycline 1 gram uh, doxycycline 100 mg orally twice 7 days recurrent persistent urethritis can be advised for metronidazole 2 grams as a single dose plus erythromycin based 500 milligrams orally for four times a day for seven days or erythromycin uh, ethyl succinate 800 milligram orally for four days uh, four times a day for seven days according to the article that presented uh, that i presented before nicerea gonorrhea is rapidly evolving and has developed resistance to all previous and concurrent antimicrobials the recent emerging multi-drug resistant gonococcal isolates in Japan, France, and Spain have provoked major concerns in public health circles worldwide, especially as the drug resistance is spreading rapidly. Consequences, we may be entering an era of untreatable gonorrhea. Medications such as penicillin and other and later fluoroconolins have been used to treat gonorrhea in the past. However, resistance to the antimicrobial agents quickly developed leaving limited options for gonococcal infection. Currently, the third generation uh, <coughs> cephalosporin, which includes ceftazone and cefexime, are being prescribed. However, resistance to the these uh, uh, extended spectrum cephalosporins has emerged within, with resistant isolates in 17 different countries. The recent emergence of Neisseria gonorrhea superbug strand in Japan which later was assigned has been shown to exhibit extremely high level of resistance to all cephalosporins, including cefixime and ceftrazone, as well as to almost all of all other available antimicrobial therapies. So new agents are being studied for these purposes. So the, in future we have to, we have, we want to do that due to lack of efficacy efficacious vaccine, control of gonococcal infection lies in appropriate antibiotic treatment coupled with prevention, proper diagnosis, and epidemiological survey, surveillance. Thank you. So it's a nice presentation, uh, Vicky. <coughs> so if we look at the prevalence, so this is uh, the disease which is more common in the Western world, yes. not here in the Asian countries. So whenever there is a suspicion of uh, gonococcal or non-gonococcal infection, if the patient come to you with a positive history of uh, sexual contact and you are thinking that uh, the patient is having uh, some gonococcal infection, so whenever you are uh, thinking to treat the patient, so would you like to consider this patient for particularly for the gonococcal infection or you need to include the treatment of non-gonococcal also? Um, I will first of all like to include the, uh, all the treatments, but before I want to take a culture to so see the diplococci and the intercellular. Okay, if you have taken the culture and after culture you need to start empirically uh, the antibiotics. Then, so the, your treatment uh, should include the uh, non-gonococcal also or not? Uh, the treatment should include non-gonococcal. First of all, we should wait for the proper diagnosis, otherwise Depending upon the symptoms of the patient, if the patient is symptomatic and he is uh, having giving the history of multiple sexual interactions, so we are not sure. 
whether we are looking for a, a solid trigonococcal infection or it is a co-infection. So empirically, we can start with the uh, therapy, but as the cultures are available and we are sure that now it is a gonococcal only infection, we can proceed with the uh, gonococcal uh, treatment. Any question? We just have seen uh, the treatment for the gonococcal infection. It includes this third generation sphalosporin, and for even for non gonococcal, we have the options of the, such antibiotics. We can go with this broad spectrum antibiotic till we have the definitive diagnosis. Currently, it is now now it is recommended that uh, even if uh, uh, your culture reveals a gonococcal infection, you need to treat the non-gonococcal also because sometimes there is a, a chlamydial infection is also included. It is most on a co-infection. These patients, so your treatment should include the non-gonococcal non-gonococcal also like the chlamydia or the others. Okay.